Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome to my shop. Today is July 11th and this is my weekly shop update. So I hope you're having a great week. I'm having a great week, so I hope you are as well. This week we're going to take a look at the epoxy encapsulated slab tabletop thing. That's out of form and looking quite nice. Also answer some questions on the pour. I got a lot of the same kind of recurring questions on that last week, so I'll touch on those as well. We'll also take a look at some cool stuff I'm doing over on the sawmill outside, cutting some big wide veneer, which is pretty sweet. And we'll also take a closer look at the Orion series of moisture meters. These are the new ones from Wagner meters. So we'll do a little look at these guys. So let's uh, jump, jump into the uh, demolding, or I guess stripping of the form for the slab epoxy encapsulation thing. So this thing turned out exactly as I had in mind. The pigment in here is like spot on exactly what I wanted. I can see down into there, but it's not totally transparent. So it's, uh, it's, it's literally exactly what I wanted. At least the idea that I had in my mind. And what I thought was kind of funny is I have this off cut from when I did the tool cabinet doors. I thought that was a big encapsulation. Uh, it's like nothing compared to this. <laughs> But to get an idea of like how this thing's gonna look with the actual finish on the wood, if we roll this bad boy over to the uh, back side, the epoxy acts as uh, a bit of a finish almost. So this is basically the color of the wood and how the contrast is gonna go between the wood itself and the resin. And I really love it. I think the two colors really complement each other really nicely. So one of the questions was, how much does this thing weigh? And I have no idea, but it is pretty darn heavy. It probably weighs as much as it would if it was some kind of dense hardwood. So most of the common questions sort of center around one theme, and that's how is it possible to pour this thick of an epoxy layer in one go without it overheating? And that comes down to the epoxy we actually use for the pours. So for a sub like this, we want to do it all at once you want to use a deep pour or a slow curing resin. So the one that I'm using is Ecopoxy's liquid plastic. I've used that in the past, so I've had a decent amount of experience with it now. But uh, other manufacturers make this now too. Uh, Polymers has their chill. Uh, I saw System 3's uh, deep pour epoxy at, on a demo at um, uh, Weekend with Wood and uh, Mass Epoxy's sells one as well. So there's a lot of different vendors selling these things now, um, but they have a slow cure, which gives a lot more time for heat to dissipate naturally without overheating the pour. So this stuff takes 72 hours to cure on the label here. Um, all the winter ones I've done have been more like four days. So that gives you plenty of time for the epoxy to let all of this heat out. It also gives it a lot of time for bubbles to naturally come out of the resin and pop themselves, which is kind of nice. So another pretty common question for this was how much was all the epoxy for this pour? And six gallons of resin is, was uh, like $700. So it's not a cheap project at all. So as I was getting like into all of the prep work and all that, I wanted to spend my time there making sure everything was all set up and perfect before doing the actual pour. So I did like everything possible to make sure this thing turned out exactly, uh, well, it didn't like get ruined or something. And it came out exactly what I had in my mind. So that's why I did all my sample pieces and I made sure the form was all perfect and all that stuff. So anyway, I'm really happy with the result. And the next step for this thing is to head back out and be flattened again. And then all of the finished prep and sanding comes after that. So this week on the sawmill, I continued cutting the log that was on there a couple of weeks ago. If you don't recall, that was the biggest log that I've ever had on my mill. My friend Eric came by and we are working through cutting up some more of this thing. 
Eric wanted to experiment with drying some really thin stock, so we're cutting half inch slabs out of this, if you can even call it slabs at that point. <laughs> we ended up cutting uh, 10 of these. Eric has a vacuum kiln with a press in it, so it should be pretty easy to dry something like this. Now traditionally trying to dry something this wide that is this thin would pretty much just turn into a potato chip. But vacuum kilns are able to dry things a lot more uniformly and a lot more evenly. And because there's a press element there, the whole press system keeps the whole thing flat while it's drying. So these should work out pretty well. And the idea here would be to then veneer these down to a substrate so you can have a big old slab type table that uh, only really takes a little bit of actual slab material. So I'm hoping to include that entire process in the video on cutting this log, which should be pretty interesting, but I will definitely keep you all updated. So for let me tell you about something this week, we're talking about moisture meters, so let's jump into it. So before we get started, in the interest of disclosure, just want to let you know that Wagner did send me out these sample units at no cost to me, and they've also compensated me to show them to you. But before we get into that, I do want to take a moment to talk a little bit about why I think a moisture meter is a useful tool to own, as well as talk a little bit about the different style of meters that are out there. So first off, why should someone really own a moisture meter? And I have two kind of examples of that. The first one is probably the more common one that comes to your mind, is if you're drawing your own lumber, a moisture meter is going to be able to tell you when the lumber is dry enough to use. And another example on more of the furniture making side, is if you have material that's being stored in a different climate or a different environment than in the shop that you're working in or in the final resting place for that piece of furniture. So for instance, if you're storing your materials out in the shed and you have an indoor or basement shop that's going to have a different humidity level than your storage location, when you bring material into the shop, it's going to lose moisture and shrink. And you know, it can go the other way as well. If you start off with a piece of lumber that's drier than the equilibrium in whatever you're working in, it's going to end up uh, swelling and growing. So you have to think about things like, do I have to let this material acclimate for a while so it doesn't end up moving on me as I'm working with it? Or for instance, if you're fitting a drawer and you're setting your gaps, knowing the moisture content in the wood and knowing how much moisture is it going to pick up or lose, is it going to tell you how much that drawer front is going to shrink and either increase or decrease the size of the gaps that you set. Now as far as the different types of meters out there, you have your pin meters as well as your pinless or scanning meters. And the meter that I've been using for a long time is this earlier version of the Wagner meters. These are scanning meters. This allows you to just place the meter directly onto your piece of wood and it'll just give you a reading that way. Now the other type of meter is a pin meter. This has some pins in it that you stab into the wood and that tells you the moisture at the depth you get those pins to. Which means that in order to get to the center of a board with this, you have to physically put those pins that deep into the board or cut your board apart so you can get a deeper reading. With the scanning meter, that gives you an average up to the depth that the meter will read. And being able to change the scanning depth is one of the new features on the Orion meters. On this old one I have here, it just has the standard deep scanning mode. On the new ones, there is the option for a shallow scan if you want to scan something a bit thinner if you're doing some thinner work pieces such as this half inch piece of walnut. So there are five new meters in the Orion series and on the back of the package it gives you a little comparison chart between all of them. There's also the same chart over on their website. So starting off with the first three, the 910, the 920, and the 930, the difference between those three models is just the scanning depth. So the 910 will only do deep scan, so it's essentially the same thing as this meter I have here. The 920 will just do the shallow scan, so if you only work with thin stock like this, that's going to be the meter you're looking for. If you want to be able to do both of them, the 930 will allow you to actually change and set either the shallow depth, the shallow depth, or the deep depth, like for something like this uh, inch thick piece of walnut. Now stepping up to the 940 gives you data collections, so if you want to take multiple readings on one board or the whole stack of boards, and record those readings or take some averages and things like that, you can do that with the data collection on these things. And then going all the way up to the 950, which is this guy right here, that's going to give you the temperature and humidity sensors. So this thing can calculate equilibrium moisture content right in the device itself. And this thing also has Bluetooth, so you can connect it to a smartphone so you can have your data collection onto your mobile device. So let's, uh, let's see what's inside one of these things. So the meter comes in a nice protective case. And the meter itself, as you can see, also has a nice protective boot on it so you can drop it 
bang it around a little bit and it won't uh, break or anything. You also get the instruction manual and in here you get a species setting guide. So these things have an adjustment on there for the density of the wood you're measuring. So you have a nice listing of various species so you can find the density of the wood you're trying to measure. Also included is a calibration pad so you can calibrate your meter if for whatever reason it does go out of calibration. It really shouldn't but just in case that is there included. The old meters you have to buy those separately just in case and kind of just checking with my old one it's still reading the same as these new ones so in theory you shouldn't really ever have to calibrate it but it's nice to have that just in case. There used to be an added thing you have to buy separately. So to use the meter is pretty easy. You just turn it on, comes on pretty quickly and you can see in the little DP there that I am in the deep penetration scanning mode and I can go into the species settings and adjust the density for the wood that I'm scanning. I have it set at 0.55 which is the density of walnut so this piece of walnut is sitting at uh, about 10. Now if you want to check something different, let's say I want to check my workbench which is silver maple, I can go back into the species setting and bring the density down to 0.47 and then go back here and I can put this down on my bench and my bench is at uh, almost 9%. So a moisture meter is definitely a great investment. It's going to allow you to know exactly what your wood is going to do as it absorbs or gives off moisture depending on the environment that it's in, which should help you build your pieces of furniture with a little more confidence. So a big thank you to Wagner Meters for sponsoring that segment and as a bit of a bonus we're giving away one of the 930 meters, which is pretty exciting. So there will be a link down in the description to the entry page for that. You can enter by subscribing to the email newsletter or by heading over and checking out either Facebook or Instagram or both and you know give them a like or follow while you're over there. This is open to everybody so feel free to jump in there and get your name in there and uh, win one of these fantastic 930 meters. <laughs> the giveaway is going to be open for a week so that is going to go until next Thursday and then I will announce a winner on the next shop update. So thank you again, Wagner. Definitely check them out. I will leave you links to all the stuff as always down in the description. What else have I been up to this week? Let's take a look at some viewer projects. First this week are a pair of side tables by Gary. The tables are made from oak beams and floorboards that were salvaged from a building that was constructed around 1520. Gary said it was quite difficult to find large usable pieces because anything that could be put back into the building was being saved. Because of the small stock, the side tables are around 16 inches square and Gary also has turned a matchstick holder from the same stock. Next is a workbench by Jesse. This workbench is made from juniper logs that had been in a forest fire and stood dead for 10 years before his dad cut them down for firewood. Jesse milled them with a small electric chainsaw freehand and then flattened them with a router sled. Next is an entertainment center by Larry. It's made from hickory and Larry used the brown straight grain boards for the top and sides and the light colored boards for the door panels. And the styles and rails are made from walnut. The center panel has a barrister hinge and a large knot that became the focal point of the piece. The entire piece was finished with three coats of armor seal satin. Last this week is a cutting board countertop by Tim. This is a nearly 40 inch end grain cutting board countertop for a kitchen island. It weighs almost 80 pounds and it's made of hard maple with an end grain cherry comfort rose inlay of his own design. Tim has a video over on his YouTube channel that you can check out and I'll leave you a link to that. So definitely check out Tim's video. I watched it this morning. It is really interesting to see that cutting board countertop thing come together. It's almost entirely done on the CNC. Uh, let's see, he used a miter saw to do the cross cuts and then he used a table saw to put a uh, straight edge on the rough lumber, but everything else, literally everything else is on the CNC. So it's really cool to see kind of that workflow with kind of everything being done on that machine. So that's cool. Anyway, check it out and uh, let's see what else. Oh, next week I'll be at uh, AWFS. Yeah, a yeah. I was getting confused because I IWF is just IWF, but AWF has an S at the end. AWFS. That's in Las Vegas. I'll be there next week. That show runs from Wednesday through Saturday, so I'll be there for that. I will probably not be posting anything next week because I'll be there, but if you're going to be at that show, I look forward to meeting you. I will be at the Triton booth. So, that should be fun. Probably. It'll be hot there. I'm not looking forward to the hot part. <laughs> so I think that's all I have for this week. 
thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments about anything I talked about today or anything here in my shop, please feel free to leave me a comment. I'd love to be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, <laughs> happy working.